All right, I just calibrated your mic for you. I just hit live, so we'll we'll go right to it. Thank you for coming on. Uh, How are you? Good. Good. All right, here we go. Welcome into the Press Row Show. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, hey, what the heck happened? You guys are late. Is it because it's been a week since you've done a show? Have you forgotten how to do it? Are you just an unprofessional group of hacks? Perhaps to all of that. Not Bill, though. He's not unprofessional. He's a fantastic guy. We had one heck of a tech scare before the uh, show got started this evening. We thought that our board was fried. It's not. Do you remember, Bill, you ever have an issue with your computer, like back in the day, and like you would call tech support and they'd say, are you sure your computer's You're plugged in, yeah. right? Yeah. Same thing. We like tried it, seven different wires, we couldn't get it to work. I started calling Wells Fargo Center's tech. And then intern Andrew, with the idea of the century, turned the board off, turned the board back on, and now we have audio. So anyway, welcome into the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame intermission and postgame show, this side of the Mississippi and south of the Arctic Circle. Uh, we are going to have a blast tonight uh, as the Flyers take on the San Jose Sharks. Is your connection good? Are we sure that your connection is live? Okay. It froze over here, but I'm sure it's fine. Can you see motion over there? So there's somebody in the building who works in tech who says that he's convinced that Wells Fargo Center is haunted, <laughs> at least when it comes to technology. We haven't had any tech hiccups, and now we're in the middle of March and it's happening. But Flyers are back, taking on the San Jose Sharks tonight. Bill is with me. Anthony is on assignment somewhere on a beach in sunny Florida. Good work if you can get it, yep. A lucky guy, yep. right? Bundy will be here in a little bit. We have another guest, I believe, planned for a little bit later on. Bill, I want to get right to it. The Flyers tonight will be without somebody who is important to their success and has been important to their success uh, this entire season, and that is their head coach, John Tortorella, who's been suspended for two games, picked up a five-figure fine by the league for his unwillingness to leave the bench when told to in Tampa. Uh, will that impact tonight's game against a team that only has 16 wins on the season? I don't think it'll have any impact whatsoever. Okay. Um, you know, he, he was there, morning skate, getting the team prepared to play tonight, etc. Uh, Brad Shaw's run the bench before, actually, sometimes late, remember late last season. Yeah, when he, uh, when Torts was up in the box with uh, yeah. Briere. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> Brad Shaw is perfectly capable of running the bench. Um, you know, we'll, See, you know, we'll see maybe a little bit more in the Toronto game, maybe. But I, I honestly think for the short term, the Flyers are in good hands. I don't think that's an issue. It is an interesting position that the Flyers have found themselves in. I'm sure that Bundy has a, a lot of thoughts on this a little bit later on, if not during pregame, during intermissions and postgame. But really big development, I, I think. While the game itself, it shouldn't matter that much, I look at more Thursday's game yeah, of him not being sure. available for the Toronto game. We can have the conversation about, like, is it a cool social media moment? Is it a fun viral moment? Is it towards being towards? Sure. But when you're a team that's on the hunt for a playoff spot, being suspended two games for failing to get off the bench is not ideal. It's far from it. It's not ideal on one hand. On the other hand, Harris got spanked 7 to nothing, and it was unintentional. It wasn't yeah. But, you know, nobody's talking about that, right? It, it was a... Uh, it, it shifted the attention a little bit uh, and, and kind of let the other guys focus on, on getting ready to play the next game. So it could almost unintentionally have a benefit to it. Obviously, you don't want to be this any kind of a long-term thing. Yeah. But uh, you, you can sub behind the bench for a couple games. I, I, don't, I don't think it'll matter that much. Not a big believer in the, uh, the lack of torts effect. Okay. Um, I want to get, I guess, your, your feeling as... The team made the moves that they made yeah. around the deadline. There was no big ad, nor was anybody told that there would be a big ad. They did send out Sean Walker. I believe that you were on in the week leading up to the deadline. And we talked about, man, imagine a beautiful scenario where the Flyers can somehow snag, secure a first-round yeah. pick from another team. And it kind of felt like it was trending in an opposite direction. But then Danny Briere pulls off. I don't know if I would – I wouldn't call it a heist. Right-handed defenseman played really solid. But – to get a first-round pick for Sean Walker, who was seen in some ways as kind of a throw-in in the deal in the offseason, 
can you think of a time that a, a GM has been able to pull off a move like that for a for a guy that really had no expectations entering the season? Yeah. Well, when you when you look at um, you know the the deadline league wide, you know the Penguins didn't even get a guaranteed first round pick for Jake Gensel, who's yeah. one of the best players in the league. Uh, now, in order to get the first round pick, yeah, they had to take half of um, you know. Brian Johansson's contract. They, they don't want the player, but that that was the deal. You, you take you take the bad contract for you know off our hands, and we'll give you the guaranteed first rounder plus plus Walker. Um, in the short term, I think the Flyers and I saw it a little bit in, in the Tampa game. I think they miss already Walker's ability to move the puck, uh, that that breakout pass ability, yeah. his ability to get up the ice himself or skate the puck out of trouble. Those are all things he does quite well. It's something they're going to have to work around, figure out how to adjust around. Now there's time to do that. Um, it would be easier to do that if you weren't so injury riddled elsewhere. Yep. But, um, you know, in the short term, it hurts you. But long term, two first round picks last year, two first round picks this year, and two first round picks next, next year. year. Yeah, not bad. That, that's not, no, I mean, that, that's how if you do it right, there, there's a big chunk of your rebuild. So, yeah. Um, the, the Johansson thing, I guess, is a little bit interesting. You know, he he very clearly there was no intention to bring him up and have him on this team. There was yeah. apparently some bad some bad blood with Torts. There were yeah. there were some things coming out about how things ended with him at his last stop. Um, there's also the story that came out. Uh, I think it was Elliot Friedman on Thirty Two Thoughts said something to the effect of he has the same agent as uh, Quitter Go Sorry Cutter Gautier. <laughs> Um, yeah. And that well, might have had something to do with it. But were you surprised that no team was willing to take him on? Well, the, uh, well, yeah, because the Flyers offered to, to eat half of that half. And I, I think the biggest thing, though, was that other teams wanted the Flyers to sweeten that. Yeah. Eat half, plus you give us something else on top of it. And I think Danny was just like, yeah, hell with that. I'll just, we'll just buy him out. Yeah. yeah. So is that – are we talking – hey, everybody. Bundy's hey, here, Bundy. and Good look, evening. hey, you can't, you might not be able to see it. If you're watching on the big screen at home, you can. But Bundy's got the best facial hair going right now. Because I, while I was too consumed in work today to, to shave down to the stash, Bundy I is rocking. He, he trimmed it, Bill, embracing it. I, I said last week, I know Meltzer, Meltzer gets this. I, I said to Russ, he had no clue. I go, yeah, all I need is a Detroit Tigers hat right now, right? <laughs> and that's, that's Magnum. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Get that now? Yeah. Bill got that. Magnum PI? Imagine Bill with a pair not of Magnum on TA, Not Magnum TA. <laughs> Magnum TA had a nice uh, mustache, yeah, too, though. Yeah, and then Heckle Mola, too. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you got to grow out the lettuce there, Bundy. Were you guys just talking about Johansson? We were, yeah. So he he got bought out. Yes. Well, they, they put him on waivers. I know that. Nobody wanted they, to take him. They, but my question was, and I haven't, with all the other stuff going on in this week, is he he's done with the or there's no he's not part of this team at all right organization the way the way that Danny put it was he doesn't see he doesn't see him, yeah, him being part of this going forward so so he's technically still an asset of the organization yeah. if somebody in the offseason wants to take him with the Flyers retaining salary then there's a path like he's still technically an asset but they have no intention of sending him to Lehigh Valley and having him with those guys, which you and I talked about. Yeah. You know, the other day about if if there is a thought that there could be a negative implication, negative ramifications, personality-wise or whatever, you don't want to put him in with the with the prospects. You, um, it, it's yeah. I mean, and, and again, I, I don't know Ryan Johansson. I've you know rumors over the years and all that, but I, um, um, yeah, you you that that to me, we were saying the other day, Bill. That's the worst day in hockey. You're on a contender in the morning. You get traded to a team significantly lesser than the one that you're on. Yes. And you then get waived, <laughs> sent to the minors, and bought out. That's, that's where this, where that's, this is going, yeah. It's, that's it's, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. So here you were, 25 games away for at least another run. And no, you won't even get to ride the bus. No? no. Like for, I mean, that's that's a fall from grace. It, it's a, that's a reality check. Reason. You know, yeah. I remember a number of years ago um, when, when Johansson was a, a rising young star in, in Columbus. This is when Richards was still the coach. It was before Torts came in. Yeah. And there were debates uh, around Flyers fans. Would you trade Giroux straight up for Ryan Johansson? Thank goodness that, that never, you know, I don't think that ever, uh, 
of him became a reality. Sure. He was a very high pick, though, yeah. Johansson. Was he number yeah. two, maybe? He was a, he was a high first-round pick. Yeah, he was maybe like real, fourth or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and one of the real rising stars in the league at one point. Yeah, but uh, you know, <laughs> he, then he had another reality check. The yeah. guy, the guy's full of reality checks. Well, he didn't. Ha he didn't have much of a motor on him. That's yeah. the whole thing. And, and that, yeah. like, if you can't just go floating around and, and last on your talent, and he had a lot of talent. Yeah. And he made a lot of money, and he's going to make a lot more money yeah. over the summer than any of us are. When, <laughs> when Torts goes to a team, the, one of the first things he does is he picks the guys who are not going to be part of this going forward. And Ryan Johansson was player number one in Columbus. He said, this guy's not going to be part of this going forward. And he was still a young player at the time. So that, that was that was Johansson's experience with Torts. And he was, he was scratched. He was benched a few times. You wonder how many guys, like, you know, for there are guys, it, it's just interesting. I'm just spitballing this yeah. as we, we talk. How many guys, though, would say, like, their agents or families or players would say Torts has ruined a player compared to Torts has raised the player. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I'm not saying it. or I, I've seen it. I've seen go to different teams he's coached at or talk to different players, and there's a lot of uh, – it's very polarizing. Yeah. It really is because there are pl players like, yeah, he made that guy a better player. Yeah, but he made someone else – completely lose all his confidence and everything i mean his thing and it's it's like been very clear for a long time his thing is go in find a whipping boy he's got a shtick Identi no identify doubt. that guy who for whatever reason he just wants to berate demoralize whatever kind of go and and prop up everyone else try to play everybody until they have nothing left to give and see how far the gas will take them and like with some teams it works really well and with other teams you know it doesn't this team is especially interesting. And, Bill, like we talked about this last week, yeah. when I think of a guy that Torts rode for a long time to start the season and has not since was Sean Couturier, who's playing, you know, roughly 20 minutes a game, was in all situations. And then, you know, in, in the last couple of months, the playing time has dropped significantly. He's effectively swapped minutes with Scott Lawton. Yeah. Um, not great. One has to think that perhaps Couturier's body, maybe not – giving out but he was called on a lot uh, after missing two seasons with back injuries so like what do you what do you view this as well i mean you can look at it they they burn the candle at both ends early yeah um Couturier's first 40 games and i looked it up actually earlier today he averaged 2003 of ice time a game very heavy ice time the hardest minutes on the team you know among the forwards even even more than connecting with the yeah um you know, and then he hit a wall in the middle of January. Now, how much of anything, if you remember, he missed two games. That's when the Flyers were winning five in a row. He missed two games. But it's kind of been ever since then. He has two goals since Christmas. Yeah. Not even before his ice time dropped. So, that's, I mean, two goals since Christmas and, and minus ten. That's not Sean Couturier. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think over the last few games, he's gotten more ice time. Actually, in, in Florida, he got a lot of ice time. In Tampa, it's hard to judge anybody from that game. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I thought in Florida he had his best game in a while. I was hoping he would build on it from there. We'll, we'll see tonight. Yeah. Um, I, I still think he's, you know, he'll be back up in the lineup. Frost is on the fourth line. We'll oh, see. that's great. Yeah, well. What could possibly go wrong? Frost on the fourth line. Wow. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. Why not play? <laughs> Frost, Frost you know is on the fourth line. I'll but, tell you but, what. But I, here's, well, you, wait, hold on. Let me, I just want. I just want to point something out. So uh -huh. all the you know stuff that's gone on and people looking for for excuses. I, I saw there was a thing earlier. Here, I just want to read this. Unless you already did it. I did not. Tippett, one goal in his last nine games. Frost, zero in his last eleven. Cates, one in his last fourteen. Paling, one in his last twelve. Coots, zero in his last twelve. And Farabee, which is really concerning. One in his last eight. Yeah, I actually re replied to it with even an even bigger picture. Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm opening it now. Yeah. yeah look, I'm there, there it is. Yeah. And then here's Bill. Great. Kate's two non uh, empty net goals for the season. Katuri two goals and minus 10 since Christmas. Farabee, a goal, five points since the All Star break. Tip at eight points, minus nine since the All Star break. Frost, zero non shootout goals, five points in the last 11. Forrester, big game against Tampa, otherwise pointless in four of the five. I mean, and, and so, so what happens is, is that that's your meat and potatoes. Those and if your meat and potatoes yeah. can't get it done, you're asking guys to find ways to do it. And listen, look at Florida. 
Flyers win that game 2-1 with a fourth line grinder digging one out for right. a real true guy, a fourth liner, yeah. not elevated to the second line when it, you know. So, and they did a lot of great things in that game. And, and Ursun clearly loves playing Florida. The Tampa game is a wash, toss it out. But what is, this is the kind of game here tonight though, Bill, if you play it correctly, you can get guys to snap out of things. Um, if, if you play it like a river hockey game, you're dead. And you will do nothing except set yourself backwards even further. If you play like a river hockey game, yep. you will lose 6-2. to two. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's all this team wants. They don't have a lot of skill. I don't even know if they'd win the American Hockey League championship. So, I, don't, I don't know if they would. Well, Bill, there are a, a few questions that are here for you, and I want to pull one up here from uh, Rory. Sure. Thanks for the Super Chat, Rory. Says, uh, how come Danny didn't send Jennings down uh, via paper transaction and keep him in Florida since the roster size doesn't matter past the deadline? I don't know the answer to that, honestly. Yep. Um, and even right now, I mean, he's scratched tonight. He's only up an emergency recall. Um, I mean, if uh, Zamula, he was sick, and by all, you know, the Flyers had to dress 5D. I don't, I don't know how they weren't able to get him from Allentown to Florida because they knew in the morning. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. Hop on a plane. Yeah. I, I don't know why that wasn't an, an option. Did, I don't know. Was there a necessity for him that they did he play in Allentown that night or wherever no. they were? No, I it didn't matter. Mind. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that is weird. That's certainly strange. Um, let's see. There are a bunch of people now asking this too, Bill. Like Eric Berkey asks, are they hitting the wall? Might explain why the scoring is dried up. It, I mean, right now, right now, other than. Other than uh, Forster, in, gen in general, yeah. Lawton was hot for a while, but no. I mean, I, I, I think part of it too, though, is even though the line has played well, they're giving so many minutes, and I guess by necessity to a degree. But but Kate's paling Hathaway, good hardworking line. They they forecheck well. They you know pin other teams in the road, but they're not going to score for you, right? And and the power play, the power play, and I actually had that in, in today's game preview. The power play from, uh, I think it was about uh, January 6th, if I remember, uh, until the stadium series, was 20.3%, trending in the right way. Okay. Since then, five for the last uh, 53. So, yeah. That's, uh, All right, so let's ask the question. Yeah. Any other year, Ian LaPerriere runs special teams for the team. Everybody's calling for his head. There are questions galore about his job security in that role. Rocky Thompson has not, uh, to my knowledge, I have not heard a lot of questions, and I'm not down in the press room. I'm not down at practice. But it does not seem as though there have been a lot of questions asked of Torts of what the deal is. Like, I get that they have significantly less talent than a lot of other teams, but they're on the cusp of a playoff spot. And if their power play were even remotely competent, they would be in a much stronger position. Why has there not been a lot of discourse, I guess, about Rocky Thompson's, you know, Let me, job security I, in I that role? I don't even want to talk about. That's fine. I mean, you could blame the coach all you want, and and and, and Bill knows this, and I know you do too. Right? It's not one guy who's like calling everyone into the meeting. Like they got John Leclaire and Patrick Sharp here. Two great power play guys. It doesn't matter when they play. They'd have an idea of what to do. I saw Kimo Tiemann in at the, uh, the alumni when night they going, him. if they need help with the power play, give me a call. Yeah. First of all, what they should do, they should actually call a defensive defenseman. Guys that play, call a guy like me. I killed penalties all the time, and I'll tell you what's hard. What's hard is when you shoot the puck and they get through. Do teams not understand this? They want, they if they're, they're in the zone, they are so determined for the tic-tac-toe yeah. beauty yeah. instead of just putting the meat and potatoes down. The best power plays are always the shooting power plays for uh, against the defenseman because what happens is you're short, you know they have an extra man. So when the shot goes through, if the goalie doesn't corral it, you've got to go find it. Yeah. And then you got to battle it out less one man. The, that other stuff, go ahead. You want to pass it around for a minute and a half, go ahead. And I'm going to sit there, I'm going to stop and wink at you the whole time because you're too stupid to figure out that the best play is to get it to the point, have the defenseman get the middle, and just snap it through. Yeah. yeah. These guys can't even get an open shot in the lane. They, yeah. Well, they, so I don't know what Rocky's doing. I mean, I, I know, like, I don't, I, I can't imagine Rocky was a power play specialist. <laughs> um, but again, that doesn't well, mean anything. No. He should have knowledge. Like, I mean, if he, if he told Torts, hey, I know the power play, I can do it. Well, I, I would assume that he knows what he's doing. Yeah. But one of the other things, too, they do have a lack they do have a lack of playmaking. 
Uh, uh, in I'm terms sure. of Giroux, like where they had that before where the team was played. And we don't – and I'll tell you what, I don't think we have a guy that's super willing – to get real dirty in front of the net. That's it, and too. that should that's be tipped. That's a big part. Yeah. And that, they don't, he doesn't get there. He just kind of goes there. The, the, don't kind of go there. Go there. I think they have guys who distribute. Yep. Um, you know, if he would play him, Brink can distribute, Frost can distribute. What they, what they don't have, they, as you just said, they do, they do not have a net front guy. Not one. None. It, they don't have a guy who's uh, a consistent threat from the slot. They don't have a guy who's a consistent threat from the flank. So uh, unless you ha unless you happen to make that tic tac toe play or the only leaves a big rebound that somebody knocks in, you're not going to score. Yeah, and 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 100 percent. No, you're right. And they don't they don't turn their power play into a war. Like that to me is when another team you can tell when another power play is really coming for you. Yeah. And because they're making you work, but the way the Flyers do it, I mean they get shot sometimes. Sometimes they're perimeter, but I'd rather I'd rather have more of a. Uh, uh, Go get that dog mentality, you know? Yeah. Have a little bit of more dog well, and you get to the front of the net, you know? That's the thing, though. They have the dog mentality on the, on the PK. They do. And, and on five on they're five, they have. They're yeah. absolutely ferocious when they're down a man. Like, I know that it's been, like, the running joke that, like, every time the Flyers get a power play, they should just try to decline it. Because they, they genuinely look like they lose an edge as soon as they have the man advantage, which just, it doesn't make sense. And, like, again, when you're... When you've made moves around the deadline that are kind of like fortifying this team to try to make a playoff run, to not have gotten through to these guys yet about, like like Bunny said, the meat and potatoes kind of approach, I don't know what we're doing here. Like, it, it should bother them enough, right? Like, to actually execute at a... But I... I my, like, execute that game plan. Execute the simpler system. If you look at a lot of the Flyers' goals that they've scored, a lot of them are not technically... like. Um, Forrester, yeah, he has relied on his shot to score goals. I always tell forwards if if you rely on your shot and you're not a, a like and that's not what you do, you won't be around long. Yeah, you have to find ways to score goals that are not that don't involve having a ton of time, 17 feet away from the net. You have to you have to be able to to be able to get into those great Brad Marchand. How does yep. Brad Marchand score his goals? He goes to the front of the yeah. net. And, and, and when's the last time they scored a deflection in front? I, I can't think of one. Yeah. Sean Couturier, yeah. the last goal he scored, right? Yeah. yeah. Against, right. was that Tampa? Yeah, it was. I think it was that game against Tampa. Where yeah. he got, was in a redirection goal where he shot it and then he kind of like stuck at the torts after, remember? Yeah, it was Seattle. That was Seattle. That was, that was Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, okay. Was yeah. 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 Well, it's just, you know. Do you want to join us on our picks tonight, Bill? I'll do it. Go ahead. All right. I already gave Russ mine, so I can't change it. Um, four to one Flyers. <laughs> wow. Anthony's four to one Flyers. Bundy. Five one. You said five me. one Flyers. Five one Flyers for me. Intern Andrew says. I, I have it written down. If you don't believe me, I also said four to one Flyers. <laughs> I got I got bad news. No. This is a junk trunk coming into town here tonight, brother. <laughs> I actually think there's a chance San Jose wins tonight. I don't know what you're talking about. I think there's a chance. <laughs> now, just because as I said there's a chance doesn't mean they will. I think well, there's always a Flyers, chance. Flyers, he really goes out on a whim, eh, gang? Flyers win 4-2. <laughs> to two. It's 3-2 two until the last minute. Empty net goal, 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. Flyers, not, not Sharks. Stop looking at me like that. What's that? What? You don't you, like how, you like how Russ, like... Dances all around it. I do. It's it's anticipation. Okay, we it builds, got another guest coming. We had a great one. You know what tonight is, Bill? What's tonight? It's Grateful Dead Night. Oh, that's right. And we got our that's great right. friend Ike Richmond coming on. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. We're gonna get Bill guys. out here bringing the knowledge, bringing the understanding, bringing it all here on the Press Row Show. As we always say, you never know who's going to show up on the Press Row Show. But Bill's like, I think he might have just set the record for most appearances so far. And now we welcome to the show. And I, he's going to have to lead off tonight's show with his prediction for tonight. Injury timeout. Huh? Injury timeout. The headphones got you. Oh, wow. Wow. Ike Richmond back on the show. Ike, how are you? I'm doing great. All right, Good what's your prediction, you prediction for tonight? Tonight, the Flyers will get a win, and that will give them an extra point more than they had all of last season. That's a positive spin. I like it. That's right. What's, but what's the score going to be? Uh, Just call it, Ike. 4-2 uh, Flyers. Hey! Empty net we up. Matching score. 
same thing. He you're, heard me. You have 14 I flyers. The show. And, I, and I said, and I said, an empty net goal. And he just oh. said an empty net. Okay, well, good. There you guys are like, ah, yeah. look at that. <laughs> we know what we're talking about. So if you're betting out there, it's absolutely time to bet on the Sharks to cover because all of us, all of us took the Flyers. Yeah, I mean, I, it, listen, the and Flyers, I, saw, I just saw like minus 340, which means you got to bet $340 to win 100. 100. Yep. You'll, you'll remember this. Like, the crowd is so revved because the Flyers haven't been here since what we saw over the weekend, right? Yeah. So the Flyer fans want to voice their opinion of how supportive they are, even though we lost, but they're pissed about, you know, the reaction towards did. They want to voice... It was like when the Flyers won that game in Pittsburgh, the five overtime game, the fans couldn't wait for them to come in. There's no way the Flyers were going to lose that game. The fans are going to be revved up tonight. There's no way the Flyers are going to lose tonight. No yeah, way. I, I don't. No I, way. And, and also add to the fact that San Jose has 16 wins on the year. Not they are already eliminated from playoff contention. Not going to happen. It is. It's. It, listen, this is the kind of game you want to come home to after 7 0. Yep. Loss on the road, a, a, a disaster of a Saturday night. Uh, but an opportunity to get back on the horse here. Yeah. Uh, like, what's going on in the building tonight? But I know you're, I, so every case everyone knows, like Richmond has been as much a flyer as some of the players, dear friend of Mr. Snyder, and still part of the fabric of this building. What do we got going on here tonight, Ike? Well, we have something tonight and something Thursday. Group Sales is doing uh, Grateful Dead night tonight. Yep. Pearl Jam night on Thursday. Nice. So if you buy a ticket, you get to come to a pre-concert party. You get a T-shirt. Oh, I actually imported a shirt here. Oh, Whoa! Get show you. Whoa! This, is, this is the Grateful Dead shirt. So you okay. get one of these with your ticket. Wow. And you get to watch the game. And then Thursday, you get to come down and you get to watch a Pearl Jam cover band. You get a Pearl Jam t-shirt. And remember they had the 10 banner up here? The yeah. Pearl Jam? They're going to have yeah. it on the concourse. You can get your picture at the banner. So it's like How if you're... That? And don't forget Pearl Jam's coming here in September for two nights. So it's sort of like all in the family kind of thing, you know? Good stuff, Mike. Yeah, no, I mean, it, a lot of these nights the Flyers have had this year, I think have been successful. Uh, there were you know, 500 people in the Cure Club. It was packed. I, I packed. saw that before the... the uh, Everybody's the, jamming yeah. the splintered sunlight down there. It was packed. It, it, uh, it really is. And, and I think, you know, like when we look back at last year, you joined us around Thanksgiving, our Black Friday game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been on a couple times with us. We love having you on. But, again, we just we, we love talking, I think, a little bit about how, how happy we are for the fans in a sense that the team's getting better. It's had a great year. It's successful to this point. They got some work to do. But the, the reestablishing of the culture and, and the fan fan dumb that always was the Philadelphia Flyers this is, back. is This is Philadelphia Flyers it hockey. Is. Yeah. This is Philadelphia Flyers fans. The fans are here. The building is electric. Everybody's talking about it. And we were just talking in the press box a little bit before. Flyers are going to make it to the playoffs. Even if they don't win one game, it's a huge success. But I think they're going to shock a few people. Yeah. And they're going to build some momentum over the offseason. And we're going to be rocking next year. We're, we're getting better every day. Danny Briere and Keith Jones are making this team happen. They're doing all the right things. Yeah, they, is, they, they've done an, uh, an unbelievable job, along with Dan Hilferty, too, really. Yeah. Just getting the pulse of the fans in Philadelphia back in the building, which, quite frankly, we'd lost. How great yeah. was it when Dan Hilferty addressed the whole thing the other day? That, that was very Ed Snyder. It's kind of Snyder. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was I great. Ed, Ed would come down to the locker room. And uh, I remember it was a Terry Gregson game and where we yeah. lost to Toronto. He goes, I don't care what you say. Go out and rip that guy. Where is he from, Toronto? <laughs> you know, I mean, and he's like, I'll take care of all the fines. Yeah, he, he, that was him, and that's what Dan said. And it, it was a great feeling for the fans. They know this is Flyers hockey. It wouldn't have happened a little while ago, but that doesn't matter anymore. The Flyers are back. The team is great. The atmosphere is unbelievable. If you're watching at home and you haven't been at a game, you got to come down. It's amazing. And how great has Snow the goalie been? The Snow the goalie is amazing. I'm addicted to it. <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm like I'm like in Starstruck. I'm on the show. It's like it's I just pulled a Russ because that would be something Russ. I was like, yeah, I'm getting. I'm usually very humble about this. I. Yeah, Russ, Russ hasn't Look said anything. I, I, I speak, Russ. Person. Listen, I'm just, I'm just taking it all in. I'm taking in the positivity. There's a lot of it tonight. Um, there is. This is a game that the Flyers have to win. They, they do. have they to can, win they the do. game. They do. You, like, I, I cannot stress this enough. If you look at the road ahead, the next eight games, it is brutal. You've got two against Toronto. You've got two against Boston. You have one against Florida. Those games alone, those five games alone, they're not going to dictate whether the team makes the playoffs or how tight it is down the stretch. But if you just look at this thing, big picture, all the way down the stretch, do you know who, who the next-to-last game is against this season? 
Washington? That's the last game. Oh, uh, Chica uh, Chicago. No, it's a divisional game. It's, it's New, a Jersey. New Jersey. Ooh. New Jersey. Ooh. And so they are about to enter this really rough stretch. And if you're able to come out of it and you're able to exceed expectations, that game against Jersey won't matter nearly as much. So I, I'm like living in this world of, hey, you're very close. We, now it's now it's it's not crunching time. We got to stand up for the anthem. We're we gonna do. call it now. Ike, great to see you, buddy. Good to see love you, buddy. having you on, pal. Anytime you're here, you're always you. welcome. We love you. All right, let's go Flyers. We'll see All you right, guys. We'll go talk Flyers. To everybody we'll first, the intermission. First intermission. <laughs>
today, we need to have a conversation. It is important. It's a conversation that we have to have. We all have to agree. You know, the big thing about a debate, here we are in the year 2024. I, I like looked at my computer like I forgot for a second. It's an election year, okay? And in an election year, you have to agree that you're at least going to agree upon what the facts are. So let's talk about the facts. We have spent the vast majority of this season viewing this Flyers team through the lens of they're a rebuilding team. They are now on the cusp of a playoff spot. We are being told playoff push. So we need to start to frame our discussion, in my opinion, about them as a playoff team. If you are going to try to be a playoff team, and we talked about this pregame about the stretch that they're about to run into with two against Toronto, two against uh, Boston, and a game against Florida, they need this game tonight. It was a weird, relatively ugly first period, and it looked like they were going to be able to get out of it with a one-goal lead. And then with about a minute and a half left in that period, a turnover in their own zone, and San Jose capitalizes. They go glove side on Arison, who's spread out, can't make the stop, 1-1 one, one after one, Bundy. Yeah, I didn't. Your thoughts on that first period? I hated it. I hated just about everything about it. I mean, again, no heavy push. This is a team that if you get the pucks in and you assert yourself, you're going to have success. If you decide that you want to play the way that San Jose just played, uh, then you're going to leave this to the hockey gods up for you to decide yeah. the, the game. It's 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 garbage. It's not the kind of hockey you want to play this time of year. No. Uh, San Jose looked like they carried the play. They have 16 wins. They are far and away the worst team in all of hockey. And the Flyers had a cheater goal at the beginning. Yes. No, nothing against fair. It was a play, but but that's how they got their chance on a breakaway. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the period, I thought that, that San Jose had carried the play into the flyer zone. They have small, statured forwards that move the puck pretty quickly, like a bunch of Russ Joys out there. That's right. And uh, uh, it was ugly. And then to get up, they go. So we take a flyers, take a lazy hooking penalty late uh, to give them the second power play of the period. And then they end up converting on it on, on a, just a, like a super easy play that, yep. to defend. And it gets in the middle, makes a backhander pass to Urson, it's 1-1. I hated everything about that goal, Russ. There's nothing about it I liked. And uh, the Flyers got to fix, find some energy in this game here. Well, it's not. I, I want to go back to a comment here because I feel myself falling into a somewhat adversarial position with some of our listeners and our longtime viewers of the show. Matt Beagle says, Russ thinks Briere and Jonesy care about the playoffs. Yeah, I mean. Let's go back to the trade deadline. What did they do at the deadline? They moved Sean Walker for a first. Absolute no-brainer. They brought in Eric Johnson, who, is, who admitted when he got here that his best playing days are behind him, that he's just kind of here to be a body and give what he can. Okay? That's a move that a team that like doesn't care about the playoffs doesn't make. They, they brought him in to be a body, yes, because they've had injuries to their defensive core, to the Sealers of the world and the Ristos of the world and the Drysdales of the world. But like they clearly had an idea that like we want to make our playoff push. They weren't going to add a big name, but they clearly do care about making a playoff run. So like anybody who's going to make the notion that like they don't actively care about it, I think are missing the plot. And they, they aren't paying attention to what's in front of them. The coach wants to make the playoffs. The front office seems to want to make the playoffs. They at least wanted to give these guys the opportunity. Team's interested in Scott Lawton last week at the deadline. What did Danny Briere say at the press conference? It was just a guy that brought people together, and we couldn't move him. And it wasn't that they that they couldn't move him, that like there wasn't another interested team. What did he say specifically about the offers, though? They were good offers. That they were good offers, that they were fair offers, or that like he would not take a fair offer for Scott Law, and he wanted to be given something that they couldn't say no to because of all the intangibles. If you're a team that doesn't care about the playoffs, you take fair value because that's your second shot potentially at a first-round pick or a high pick for a guy in Scott Lawton who struggled a lot this season and has been very good since the deadline. They didn't do that. So, again, they clearly care about making the playoffs. 100% they do. So, because it would be – so here's – if your team doesn't make the playoffs, then you've had this great push all for nothing. So – Yeah. And, and the reward for the players – is to make the playoffs. So, of course, they want to make the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, getting around gives guys experience 
and uh, who knows what will happen, right? But, I yeah. mean, listen, I don't think this team's not destined to get to the finals. If they do, like we said the same thing with the 2010 team, they had the one in a shootout. Yeah. Crazy things have happened. This yep. team lacks a skill to probably carry themselves into deep rounds in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, we've known what they are, and now that they've lost Walker, I think the, I will say one thing. The departure of Walker things. has been kind of uh, noticeable. Yes. Well, that, that's actually a question here that was asked by Kyle Adams. He says, is this performance more because of Sean Walker's departure or Torts' benching? Now, I believe before you came on pregame, Bill Meltzer and I, we were talking about the, the moving of Walker, and he said the number one thing that has stood out to him so far is the inability to get that stretch pass and to get really to get from the defensive zone into the offensive zone, that you're missing what Walker brought to this lineup and that it's been a noticeable thing for them. They've, they've really struggled in that regard. Yeah, I mean, getting pucks out, breaking them out, having given guys a clean exit with the puck or making a simple play is invaluable, and he did that. You know, and again, I think they missed Sealer too. I mean, obviously that play at the end with, uh, with Stahl getting turned around, I mean, he didn't know where the puck was, and his stick was, he got his stick kind of caught in his up high, and he didn't have a stick on the ice, but... I think Sealer definitely, you know, like I, sometimes you notice guys more when they're not in the lineup. Yeah. And, and that's certainly the case. I mean, obviously, you know, they want to get, they're going to, they're going to want to try to get a replacement for Walker in the form of a younger player. And maybe that's Drysdale. Yeah. But again, you know, when you look at the way the moves had to be made, could Danny go into, imagine what people would be saying if they kept Walker mm-hmm. and they didn't make the playoffs and yes. Walker left left at the end of the year for nothing oh, i would i would have absolutely gone right. i would have, have absolutely them. yeah 100%. and everybody would have so again you know you have to you have to have a fine line i think danny understood that it was their very very fine line they had and he had to improve the team with getting picks and getting younger yep while also trying to keep things intact so the players feel they have a chance to continue to work towards the playoffs with that yeah. with that goal in mind. And in fairness, this is why every time we do the show and like Ant is here, which by the way, if you missed it, he is still down in Florida. He comes back tomorrow. He should be here Thursday. Um, and this weekend at the live show on Saturday, which we'll talk about in a minute. They, Ant has, has said a bunch of times, well, you can do both things. You can try to rebuild and you can try to make the playoffs. And the thing that I've constantly said is, you don't see a lot of teams do it. It's really hard. It genuinely is a difficult thing to try to rebuild on the fly and try to contend. And I think that you're kind of seeing that because they, they were kind of between a rock and a hard place. If, if they really wanted to say, listen, guys, we appreciate everything that you've done, but it is time to sell off some parts. The Walker move, listen, I don't think any, regardless, a first round pick for a guy who could have walked in the offseason, you have to take. 100%. We yeah. talked about it for weeks leading up to the deadline. Yep. Even if it torpedoes their chances now at making the playoffs. It was still worth it because it was a first-round pick. You're a rebuilding team, and you need that asset. The assets are more important in that in that case. But I, I guess my question, and you know, we talked about Adder during the period, but like, are you surprised that they don't have a guy who seems to be able to step in? Like, I get that they've lost Drysdale, they've lost Risto, you know, they've lost Sealer. So yes, they're playing guys that they don't necessarily want to have to play right now. But like, are you surprised they don't have a single? The young whole, guy ready to step into the lineup in some meaningful way. The, it, the whole lead needs D-men yeah. and, and center. I mean, it's so hard. And that's because that's where your quality control comes from on your team, you know. When your D are good and you have good centers, they, they clean up a lot of mess in the D zone. They really do. Yeah. So, you know, and again, I'm seeing some comments here, like you lose two defensemen and, and you add them, but the, uh, adding like a seventh defenseman, and yeah, that kind of is, that's exactly what's happened. But injury and then the trade forced what was – what happened right yeah. sealer got hurt the, the day he signed i think you know like i mean he, he just was kept here and then he got hurt so um this is there's a lot of d that that are just not top four guys that yeah. are playing top four minutes mm-hmm. in the league and i mean look at san jose you got guys i never heard of some of these guys before and uh our good friend there super fan eric is always up here saying hello um nice guy great guy and uh, great guy great guy um and so, really, that, that's what it is. I mean, I think everybody would love to have, like, six awesome defensemen, but it's hard. And yeah. It's hard to get everybody playing like that every night. I want to get to this because Vinit's not the only person to ask this, but it is a fair question. When they played in Florida and they picked up a win in Florida, an, a very improbable win, if we're being honest, right? Like, I listen. I don't know if you ever listen to any out-of-market shows on the radio or, or anything, but I listen to, like, Lebetard's show. Yeah, Dan Lebetard. I, I get a kick out of that show, and I for whatever reason, I like the local hour where they talk about the Miami teams. Mm-hmm. 
but they were like kind of beside themselves the next day. Like Roy's their guy who does like one of their does like one of he does the hockey show and something else, right? But they were talking about how surprising it was that the Flyers beat that Florida team because they Florida's been fantastic, really good, sensational team. They went down there and it was it was Jennings and um and Adder together. Yeah, they right? played great. And they played really well. They were given an opportunity. Two young guys in the rebuilding season were given the opportunity because of injury to play together. They played really well. And this the coaching staff has said, well, screw that. We need Mark Stolen. Why why do you think they especially against this team? If you're gonna if you're if you decided that you can't do it against Tampa for who, whatever reason, who else is why out? couldn't why I don't couldn't know who else you, you put in? Why couldn't you do that tonight though? Sit stall. They don't. Like, I don't think have, they have enough defense. Have, have Jenny and Adder together. Oh yeah. I mean, well, like why not? Why not let those two play together again? If it worked in Florida, I'm not saying that it's a, 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 you know going to solve everything, and I'm not saying that it's going to prove to be like some revelation here. But like, if they played really well against Florida, why not give them a shot against a terrible San Jose team? Like, why not at least experiment yeah. with it a well, little? Well, one of the reasons was in Florida. Um, they had the last change, the Panthers. Yeah. So it was just easier to keep them together. I think that's okay. they didn't want to break up the other pair, so they played them. They wanted to play them more sparingly as a third pair. Okay. Which was was the fair thing to do. But yeah. they played very well. And Urson was great. Like yes. he really was great in that game. He's been awesome in Florida twice. So I mean, there's a lot of there was a lot of good. Uh, oh, this this is interesting too. Matt uh, I guess Matt, Matt Beagle, who I took to task, but I appreciate for still being here and throwing comments up here. Uh, Belpedio. Del, what did happened Del to him? Did Belpedio die? He like, did not. Dude, he like he was here. He was he, playing great. He was here. Well. He was here. Great he had, job. He had one, he had job, one really bad game. <laughs> Remember, there was like it was like a fourth game, maybe third game. He had like a really rough game, and it feels like that cost the confidence of the. Co- I don't know. I don't get it. All right, like ah, I've been very consistent about the coach since the day they hired him. Through last season, through this season, through like the goofiness with Ant, the whole thing. I have not wavered on this. I I just this drives me nuts because I get it again. You're trying to make the playoffs. Best foot forward, all that. You have a young team, you have a lot of young guys that could use a look. Whether you make the playoffs or not this year is pretty irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. These are the times where it's like, man, give some of the guys the minutes, especially when they're available because of injury. Like, see what you have. You know what Mark Stahl is. You know. Yes. Like, give, give some of the guys minutes. And, look, if they fall on their face, then fine. Like, you've given it a shot, and it hasn't worked. But, man, like, I don't know. I, I think that it's fair to be a little bit frustrated about it if you're a fan. Stahl hasn't done really anything to justify being in the lineup except that he's a veteran who, like, you initially brought in to kind of be a good locker room Got guy. Got to the finals last yeah, year on like, that Florida team. Like, he played well, yeah. and, and, and it was a no-brainer for the he, money he, he had hasn't, But he hasn't done it here. Like, he hasn't really done anything here to kind of justify it. I guess that's the frustration. I may, Maybe I'm alone. Maybe it's just me being, you know, whiny rebuild guy. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to hold the, the, the team and the coaching staff. You know, you want to be a playoff team? All right. Well, then justify it. Yeah, no. Stahl I, hasn't done it. But that's but, this is what they have, Russ. Yeah. And it is. And, it's, and I understand what the fans are thinking. We're like, okay, well, we just got rid of a guy who could play. Mm-hmm. But, see, that's, a, that's the other side of it, right? Like, you had to move something out to get back something for that guy because that's the rebuild. But I, I understand a lot of the, I understand a lot of frustration because I think a lot of people were thinking beginning of the year, we're going to ship, like, seven guys out of here. We're going to flip it around. And I think what happened was is that they found a lot of salvageable parts. Um whether that is a, a torch salvageable part, like where it, it works for a while and that guy's just playing so great because the coach is going to come down on him, or is did they really turn the corner? And I think there's a lot of that. There's a lot of guys that have played well uh, for certain coaches and other guys that don't. But I do understand some of the fr- fans' um, frustration in that, well, they said it was a rebuild, but it doesn't look like a rebuild. They're just trying to compile what they can right now and they have to add skill. Skill costs money if you yeah. go shopping for yeah. it, right? And you got to find some in the draft as well. So, again, we won't may not be complaining in five years if the Walker pick comes through and it's a hell of a play, Yeah, right? sure. Or if you use that asset to move up in a draft or, or something like, which, again, is I think always the underrated part of getting a pick is that it, you don't necessarily have to make the pick. That pick can be part of a package to go out and get you a guy that is a proven thing or to move you up in a draft for a guy that you believe. Um, I, I will say... Just for the sake of not being a hypocrite here, they at least didn't dress Atkinson tonight. 
Yeah, that that's you know, that's like, a good and, and so like while I'm sitting here going like stall, why? Why not let Jennings play, right? At the same time, they at least aren't playing Atkinson who's been really bad and who I was as high on I think at the beginning of the season as anybody because it's like wow like the guy after missing last season or missing significant time like he was playing really well he hasn't he hasn't played well and they you know they have Gurianov in the in the uh, lineup tonight well they want to definitely see what's there they want to see what's if, there. They can, if that's a salvation project right there that they want to try to want to try to fix that and see yep. if they can get it back but and again I don't mind that move at all you know, you got a guy that you got for Wade Allison, who you never were going to play here. So you may as well see if you can flop him for a guy that has a little bit more skill and uh, is, has shown in the NHL that he's actually really stepped up big time before. So yeah, and that happens, and then guys don't get back to it. But I mean, why not give it a shot? Again, he was big thing. he was worth the gamble because they had, they had really, as an organization, given up on Wade Allison, and it makes sense that if if that got if you have a guy who's an asset that you you think there's just nothing here, there's no future. Well, then you absolutely make that swap. And you try. You see if a change of scenery works for a guy. And if Guriana, look, if, for whatever reason, I'm not saying he's going to, like, have the, the tippet kind of upward trajectory, but, like, if he comes in and he's, like, a decent enough player and you found something there, it's better than the zero that you think that you had in, in Allison. Yeah, and Tippett, you know, again, like, they're, that the contract he's got also is a is a growth contract for Tippett, too. Like, they want to see him continually getting better. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, again, consistency in goal scoring for Owen Tippett, I think, is going to be um, the dogma that's that kind of gets after him. Because yeah. I, I think he's going to score a lot of goals in spurts, and then I have a feeling... He might be one of those guys that goes through games and games where he doesn't score. So maybe you you take the streakiness. I, he's take, a streaky guy. Yeah. You take the streakiness of him, and then you flip him when he starts to go cold with Atkinson, and you hope that Atkinson gets hot, and then you flip him back. No, it doesn't work like that. No, I was, it's like a platoon. You know, it's like a platoon in baseball. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It won't, he can't do it. But I think I, I think Atkinson's. He looks I, done. I mean, if he. The only way I can see him coming back in is if there's injuries yeah. at this point. I mean, I get yeah. nothing against Cam Atkinson personally, but that seems like a great guy. We've heard nothing but good things never, about Cam Atkinson. We know all the guys are great guys, yeah. but, you know, again, it's like anybody. You, you judge it for what it is at the time. I mean, we all do. We all we all grow and get older. Yeah. You can hang around a league long long enough, and you all get crapped on at the end anyway for all the good. Yeah. The end is never great. Believe me, it's hard. You know what doesn't get crapped on? That beautiful mustache on Bundy's face, and I'll tell you something else that doesn't get crapped on. Great thing that we have going on this weekend at La Cecilia down in Oxford, PA. Tickets available. Shop.snowthegoalie.com. We've had a run on tickets the last couple of days. I think people are starting to solidify their plans for this weekend. Big hockey weekend, Flyers Carnival on Sunday. But Saturday night, 5.30, the Press Road Show, La Cecilia. You get your ticket. Huge Italian buffet included. We'll be doing the Press Road Show, pregame, intermission, postgame. Uh, game's going to be up on a big screen. It's going to be a lot of fun. Great time. Check it out. Shop.snowthegoalie.com. We'll be back. Second intermission. Yep. Intern Andrew's got trivia. Everybody get excited. The hype is real. Hold your ears. It's time for the outro.
second verse, same as the first. Two, two. After, after two. <laughs> I don't know what else Jimmy, to say, dude. What's, the, what's that? <laughs> That's what that was. Just a big... Bundy's blowing raspberries. That's what that's what we've been reduced to. I want to point out, for the record, I was going to take San Jose 3-2. And then I realized that I lost a point after the last game. Look, the Flyers could still I win. I wish I could bomb right now. The, the <laughs> Bundy bomb. Let's be very I can't, clear. I, we cannot do the let's Bundy be, bomb Let's here be very arena. clear to the people who might be new to the show. That as we sit in the balcony level of the Wells Fargo Center, he's talking about the Bundy bomb, dropping an F-bomb. That's Just the be, Bundy bomb, and I, I would love bomb. to use one right now because, okay, first of all, uh, I've heard a couple little things, and this is for a good buddy out there that reminded me of it. What's that? The referees, if you're watching the game, have nothing to do with the game, okay? You can cry and whine all you want about the refs. It ain't going to do anybody any good. Well, so it feels like they, a lot of the calls are going against the Flyers tonight. Yeah, it, it's ridiculous. Every call they've made has actually been, I think, decent tonight, and they've gone against San Jose too. You can't whine and cry for penalties the whole night. It's not going to get you any extra help. So, with that being said, I'm just saying, Boosh. I'm just thinking about it, and and I just can't. Who, I, I didn't I say. Just, I didn't say any names. I'm not. So I'm not I'm either. Is, I'm just that, saying. But so, again, you, oh, you, oh, I said I said the wrong name. Flyers aren't getting the calls, but they are. All right. In this game, they're stupid. They are stupid penalties. Very bad. And they're deserved. Yes. They're dumb. Bad. If the refs aren't out to get the Flyers. No. It's nothing to do with that. They're, no, you know what? The refs, they've, they've plotted a big conspiracy because they're upset that John Tortorella showed up, Wes McCauley, and the crew. So now for the rest of the season, the, fly, the refs are out to get the Flyers. They're going to make sure those Flyers don't win another game. They miss the playoffs. That's how they're going to get it, Bundy. It's a big conspiracy. All right. They are in the midst of their two periods down. I was, they are on the precipice. They are on the precipice of potentially losing to a team that comes in with 16 wins. And they have had opportunities, but we have to be fair here. The, the end of the period, obviously, some great saves. They also hit a post, I believe, there at the uh, with like 15 seconds left. San Jose has had plenty of opportunities in this game as well. Mm -hmm. And if you go back to the first period, there were at least what two that hit the post, one that was a stick save and a beauty in the first. Like. This could very well have been a 4-2 game right now for San Jose. Conversely, the Flyers could have walked away with a lead after that flurry at the end of the period, but they are, I, they, play, I, are they playing down to San Jose? They are. They're not playing well. But you know what else, too? You know, there's a lot of um, – this is a game tonight. There's a lot of passengers on the Flyers tonight. Yes. There's a lot of passengers. There's not a lot of drivers. There's a lot of people hoping somebody takes the wheel and hits the gas and is able to drive the bus, but no one's done that. San Jose is just playing free and loose. They're already eliminated. Yeah. And you got guys I've never heard of, some of them, and that goes for just about everybody, including Flyers and the team. They don't, there's a lot of guys you never, we don't know. Yep. And that's what happens when you're on a really bad team. But I actually think, and I'm going to go with uh, uh, Mark Fic uh, Brandon Ficara here. I'm going to roll with Brandon on this one. I think the Flyers are going to make mince meat of them in the third. A three goal. Uh, I didn't flurry. say three. I think they're going to win the game in the third. Okay. And I think that we're going to be pissed off about the first two periods because of the the, pr the process and how it went. But I think the San Jose is just a, like a, a team where they wait for their wheels to come off every night. And I think the Flyers, having had some good third periods here in the past, is uh, have to come out and really establish a good... You win, win a 20 period, you get the worst team in the league, and you win a hockey game. That's the way I'm saying Greg has a great question here. Bundy, how important <laughs> are the first five minutes of the third period? The whole 20 is important in this one because it's like you're tied 2-2 um, with, a, with a tire fire. And yeah. that's the problem you're in right now. So you're in the locker room saying, you know, and they get, you can get frustrated with games like this, like where you're in there. And I've been there many times, lots yeah. of games. And I'm like, man, like, you know, we, we can't get anything going. And, and it feels like you have to wait. But this is a game where everyone's got to take a little bit more onus. I think Cam York's had a good game. Just thinking, like, guys that have jumped out at me. I think he's been the Flyers' best defenseman tonight, yeah. Cam York, uh, up front. You know, again, uh, you know, when I see Tippett and Forster, these guys got to go to the net more. Yeah. Like, they, they rely on their shots too much, and I'd rather see guys get kind of dirty and greasy uh, in the paint, and, and I don't do enough of that. Um, hey, Andrew, bring up the uh, Linda Joseph comment from before, because it was a good question. Uh, he wanted to know how the expected goals are looking in this game, and so uh, we are here to, to please. We are here to serve the people. Um, 
Well, the deserve to win a meter right now is 53% in the Flyers' favor. It keeps moving, but I guess it has to do with the uh, Who came up with, with that the, intermission, thing? the intermission speech. I don't know. Uh, as of right now, the Flyers are leading expected goals 3.29 to 2.85. So, it, listen, a relatively no, we even can game. We can go home now. We can go home. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Um, all right. Before we get to what everybody's really here for, which is intern Andrew's trivia time, we do want to send a, a shout out and a big thank you to our sponsor over at Pennsylvania Recovery Center. Uh, we talked about this, and there, I, sometimes I feel like there's no way to transition into it because it is a serious thing. It is. Right? And life changing stuff going on people over at Pennsylvania there Recovery are, Center. There's so many people struggling with addiction, mental health issues since the pandemic. It has really, really uh, gotten worse in a lot of ways. And, and uh, it, when my first stint with the Flyers ended uh, in 2020, I went into uh, this this uh, field of, of mental health, addiction recovery. I have 13 years of sobriety myself, which I'm super proud of, but I want to give that to others to have the chance. So I have four centers now in the Philadelphia and surrounding area, Pennsylvania Recovery Center, and uh, we're located, we have places in Cherry Hill, Fishtown, Phoenixville, Phoenixville. and uh, Marlton. Yep. So we're good to go. And if we got and we actually have our Warriors Way, which is also our um, our mental health housing uh, and programs for our military first responders, police firefighters, EMTs, all that good stuff. That's awesome. Uh, if you or someone you know is in need of detox or an assessment um, for rehab, give them a call today, 610-233-4342. Yep, 610-233-4342. Or you can go over to Pennsylvania uh, Recovery Center dot org to uh, to get something set up. So big thank you to them for sponsoring the show. Intern Andrew, it, this is your moment. It's now time for Intern Andrew's trivia time here in the second intermission. And and listen, we see the numbers tick up every time you come on the screen. The people like you. They might even love you. We're not sure yet. It's one or the other. <laughs> Intern well. Andrew. As long as they just react to me, I'm fine with it. We, we nailed his last week, though, right? When it was just me and you. Ant gets in the way. He does. Yeah. All right. Let's see if, uh, if we can make it two for two without Ant. Okay. So this is our first press row show since the trade deadline on Friday. And I think correct. that the general feeling in Philadelphia was it was more or less what we expected. They dealt Walker. Hold on. Held on to Sealer, more or less. I, I don't think anyone thought anything too crazy about it. Point being, can as you angle your camera down a little bit, young man? Why don't you, wait, flip it sideways. I want to see if it, it. It won't stand up vertically by itself. I don't think. Are you sure? Pretty darn. With the stand? Yeah, I think that only works horizontally. Are you sure? Do you want to try it? I don't. Is this hazing if I if I do this to, I don't, I don't to Andrew while this is happening? Oh, there we go. See, look how much better that is. I don't, look at that, look at that handsome like, double. No, but then you use, there you go, and now you use the stand. There you go. Don't no, let you it got, fall. Now you got a thing there. The cord's in oh, the way there. Oh, the cord's in the way. That thing's going to fall. Just leave it. Go ahead, intern. Join Media LLC and Snow the Goalie is not responsible for intern Andrew's personal <laughs> equipment. All <laughs> I right. paid for it. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but look how much better you look now. Like, look at this. It's not just your head. It's it's all of you. Yeah. I waist up, at least. Yeah. It's, um, not, <laughs> it's not a hairpiece, Ogie. Right, the, I actually just got this cut because I was getting roasted. In the it, it, apparently, it didn't work. The haircut looks great. <laughs> Looking yeah. suave. Some dapper. It's, some like a, it's like a Lego head. If we can get intern Andrew a, like an, uh, uh, an absolute fantastic date. There are those little things thing, you put like, on Lego? Where you stick the head there, like the hair on top of the yeah, head? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. the little, yeah. Like, all right, all right, you can Andrew. also reuse the little grass pieces. Anyway. Haircut Mom's gonna get mad at me. She is, and I, you nah, know what? She and she's should. gonna, she's she gonna be should. at the live show at, at uh, La Cecilia in Oxford on Saturday. <laughs> so, anyway, go ahead, intern Andrew. Uh, I, I don't even remember where I left off. Uh, so the, fly, the trade flyers, flyers made trades, but I, I think the theme with trade, de the trade deadline always is time will tell. So I think that phrase "time will tell" will be best embodied by this question. So, okay. 2003, mm -hmm. the Flyers were part of a three tr three team trade that involved the Florida Panthers and tonight's uh, opponent, the San Jose Sharks. The only thing that got moved around in this trade were just a bunch of draft picks. So the Flyers ended up with a 2004 sixth round pick, uh, and it was Ladislav Skirko. Okay. Didn't play a minute in the NHL. So needless to say, that one didn't work out. However, the Sharks got a 2003 seventh round pick, 205 overall. And to say that this guy did pan out would be the understatement of the century. So who did the Sharks pick? In, in 2004. 2003. 2003. Flyers, Flyers got a 2004 pick. The Sharks got a 2003 pick. This uh, trade was made in June of 2003. 
So it was a 2003 seventh round pick. Was it Mark Edward Vlasic? No. That San Jose made. Yeah. And it was a good player, very good player. Very, very good player. An elite player? You could probably say that, yeah. I mean, I'm, think, I'm thinking back. So, I mean, like, you, you, when I look back at San Jose. From is this guy still playing in the league? Matter of fact, he is. 39 it's, it years old. It wasn't Big Joe, was it? No. Oh, okay. it's, I know I'm who it is. Just, He's in Dallas now. It's Pavelski. At a boy, It's a great kick. Yeah, it's a good, great trivia. It was yeah. Little Bo. Uh, little, little Joe. Little Joe. It had to be one of the Joes. I actually looked it up. Unless Wikipedia lied to me. It says that he was the... He still remains the all-time playoff goal leader among American-born players. He's more than Kane. Wow. Really? Pavelski, yeah. Yeah, he's like one of those, he's got a, you know, have another chance again this year, I think, you know, like, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chance, well, yeah. So, yeah, again, that's kind of those guys you kind of play with. If I had a guy like that, I tell you what, you can get guys to rally around him, like a player like that. Yeah. Like if you bring a guy in that hasn't won, you're like, oh, wow, this is, you know, you can, it can happen. I've seen it where you really think. Pavelski, like, hold on a second. What was the, was it last year that Pavelski had, he was out with the concussion. And then he came back in the lineup, and didn't he score like eight goals in seven games, or eight and six, or something? Two years ago, I think he had five in a game, didn't he? Was it five? Yeah, goals yeah, but or? wasn't it? That was last year, I think. Can you pull the stats? Like, I'm mostly sure that it was. What was the stretch? It was the playoff run, right? Am I crazy? Pavelski definitely had a run in the postseason. He where did, but he, he had was, one. He had one in San Jose and in Dallas. And maybe it was in San Jose. It wasn't the bubble playoffs, or was? It? I will say, there was, to, there was to, Bun- a- to Bundy's point about being able to rally around a guy, if you remember that game seven they had against Vegas where they scored four goals on that same power play? Well, Pavelski was the one that got cross-checked in the face that set up that, that uh, penalty to begin with. So, um, uh, I don't I'm, I'm like looking for it because he had four goals in an overtime in, in, in he, game one of an overtime game. I last, thought he scored last year. like every goal in the game. He and did, he and, he, and he scored it in overtime. He had four in the one. I swear he had like eight goals in five games. Oh, you know or something what? Like that. You know what I was thinking? Sorry, this was actually when I thought he was done, and I'm going back to San Jose. But Jeremy Roenick played there. Yeah. He had five points in game seven, well past his prime. And uh, you can check that. I don't know. It was a game seven, but I, I'm Roenick almost, did. Jer- Jeremy Roenick had, I believe, five points in a Game 7 San Jose win several years ago, obviously, many years ago. But it might have been 2008, maybe 7, 8. The reason that I remember doing this is because my day job writing about sports betting, like, I definitely remember citing that trend because the odds on him to score a goal were, like, insanely affordable at the time. And it was like, he's he's been on an absolute tear. I'll figure it out for later, but you've still it was, been good was, this year it was, too, it right? Last, it was last postseason. You still got 23 goals this year. It sounds right. Yeah. 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 He's he's been he's a good. He's you know certainly could be a, a future Hall of Fame numbers. He's got yeah. over a thousand points the games. He doesn't have the cup, but I mean that doesn't matter. I mean if you got those kind of numbers and that dura- that durability. Yeah. Oh, he scored tonight. So Adam B, thanks for the update on. Joe Pavelski, who we really won't have to worry about again um, uh, unless we get to the I'm, finals. I'm seeing a game six for Ronick against, uh, against Calgary. He had two goals and two assists. Okay. Unless he uh, unless he did that more than once. All right, here we go. It was in San Jose for sure, Andrew. If you do find it, we'll try. It, it, it was Sharks versus Flames. I'm just going year by year for yeah, Ronick's here, playoffs. Here, I, I knew I wasn't crazy. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I was right. It was eight goals in uh, six games. And, uh, yeah, it spanned it four against Seattle. And then, yeah, that, that's right. It was across this. It was in the Seattle series. He had eight and six games, including four in, the, in game one. I think that was after he came back from a concussion that cost him the end of the year. And they didn't know if he was going to play or not. And then he came in and he scored four goals. Overtime winner. It was great. Agent like fine, fine one. Pavelski's a real, I mean, he's a, he's very, an al- very good hockey player. Very good hockey He's player. still an alternate captain down there in Dallas. Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to get, I like the question here. Someone said, who's getting it tonight? Who are we going with the third period? Who's going to step up? Because we said someone needs to drive the bus because no one's driven it yet. Yeah. Want me to start? Andrew, you going to chime in with us? Who's going to be the hero here? Who needs to, who the Flyers need? To strap on a pair here tonight and get out the third and get this done. Get those skates on nice and tight. How is it not the captain? Victoria. Okay. Russ? Lead by example. Lead by example. All right. Russ? I don't think it matters. I don't even know if the Flyers are going to score in the third. 
I, I've, I've flipped my pick. I think San Jose is going to win. I think they have the momentum. <laughs> I flipped my pick. <laughs> I'm just saying, I can't. I can't. My pick is locked in, but I, I do think that San Jose is going to win. Russ told me he was going to bet on the Sharks. Uh, yeah, I, dude, what a. I almost never bet on games, but like if I were going to. What a donkey show this is turning out to I'm be. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, Sharks, I'm... <laughs> Sharks plus one and a half is uh, minus 275 at the Snow Goal. The, you know uh, what, dude? Sportsbook. I'm going with this right now. I'm going, going with our boy, Andrew Fawcett. What? I'm going with Gurianov. <laughs> Get that! I am. Come on! I'm going. No, you're not. Andrew Fawcett, you, you don't called it, it for him, no, baby. Gurianov gets it done. You can't do that. Watch. You can't do that. Watch. You can't do that. Stop. We got uh, 222. I am going with Gurianov. He's All been right, around here, the here. net. All right. Greg Mack says uh, Forrester. Robbie goes with TK. Asphalt Cowboy thinks that York is going to be one to score. Philip Albert says TK. Why is he calling him Tiny Kitten? That's just. <laughs> I don't Who's know. <laughs> Ryan Ellis. <laughs> That's true. It's been forever. Ryan I've Ellis. actually. All right, now, just hear me out. Somebody said this around the deadline, okay? What if the reason the Flyers didn't make a big move at the deadline for a defenseman, yeah. given given the issues in the defensive court? What if Ryan Ellis is going to play in the playoffs? I'm not serious, but just imagine Ryan Ellis rides in. You know the else? White Knight, he just shows up, top pair of minutes. You know what else we could use, too? What could we use? Big center like a Ryan Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have one of those available? Imagine. Seven years late. I'm... All right, anyway. <laughs> Go Flyers. I say <laughs> they good. get Adam, two. Adam, the... Adam says Ellis tore it up in those five games. Flyers legend. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, listen, we, uh, we had a lot of fun here uh, tonight. And we've got, I just want to point out to people, and you know this, if you've been with us before, and many of you have, we'll be here post-game. Uh, we will not carry the Torts press conference today. Without Ant, without the possibility of fireworks, we're not carrying the Torts press conference. Intern Andrew's going to be up here on the, the ones and twos on the board uh, with us. We'll do a post-game recap, and we'll see. I I, I, I said, what, 4-2? You said 4-1? Well, yeah, I'm you done. Said I, no, I said 5-1 Flyers. You said 5-1. So, out of the three of us, the only person whose score could still happen is me and Bill Meltzer. Anthony was 4-1, right? He yes, was. it's me. Two points. All right, well, the Flyers better Look, figure it out one here of two because things happens. they can't lose this game. Like, they cannot afford to lose this game. You give back the two of the Islanders. I'm just telling you. If they lose if this I'm game, post-game is going to be fiery up here. I'm, not, I'm telling you. I, I, they cannot lose this game. They can't. They got. They have to get two points off this. So what if they lose? In, what if they lose in overtime well, and get a they, point? Yeah, that still sucks. All right, and on that, we'll be back post game. Talk to you guys very soon.
the Flyers with a win, just like we all drew it up. The Flyers win 3-2 in regulation. A that game that they grabbed by the throat and they just, you know what, they strangled the life <laughs> out of guys. the thousands in attendance tonight. Not a great game by any stretch of the imagination, but you know what, Bundy? We came into the game saying you got to win this one, especially given the, the schedule you have coming up over the next week and a half, two weeks. You got to win this one. It was ugly, but they did win it. Ugly, ugly, ugly hockey game. And um, sitting with uh, Nick Schultz and Johnny LeClaire there in the third. <laughs> It, you know, it's funny when even with your broadcaster management coaches, the hockey guys kind of get it, and they were they felt the same way we did. Yeah, just not a good game, no. not a not a good uh, not a good tempo to the game, um, but they won, right? And I said at the end of the second, like I, I don't want to start um, judging style points and all that because it doesn't matter right now. What does yeah. matter is the two points, and yep. they got the two points. Uh, I'll give San Jose some credit. You know, that's a bad team. But <laughs> yes. they are, but they're really bad. But they came in here and competed hard. Yep. They made things interesting. Yep. Um, this was um, probably a little bit of a hockey god win tonight for the Flyers because they, <clears throat> I mean, people can say they don't, I don't want to say they didn't deserve it. They didn't play as well as they, as we've seen them play. And, um, and they got away with one here tonight. But they needed, yeah. they needed to win this game. Well, it was Grateful Dead night tonight, and I think we're all grateful yeah. the game is dead and done. It was gratefully dead all yeah, night. Yeah, it was just. <laughs> what a rough. I, look, I know people are looking for a silver lining, some positives yeah. to take a out. A win is a win. Our a friend Lee Carrasso, your, so there it is. A win is a win. Yeah, there's your silver lining. It was a win, and, and by the way. Yeah, I'm with you. A big two points as they continue to make their run towards the playoffs. They are now 1-0 this season when John Tortorella is out after getting suspended for not leaving the bench. So that's a, uh, a really top-notch stat that not even our Snow the Goalie stat department, uh, research department, was able to find. But I, I scoured the, uh, the stats for that one, so that's a good one. Uh, by the way, I don't even know if we said this in the beginning of the show, but welcome into the Press Row Show postgame, the number one rated pregame intermission and postgame show the side of the Mississippi and south of the Arctic Circle. Bundy, uh, not a great game, but one that they needed. They, they, how do we put this in a nice way? The lineup that they chose to run out tonight, we talked about the stirring intermission, we talked about it a little bit pregame as well. The decision not to play Cam Atkinson tonight, play a veteran. They instead had Gurionov in the lineup. Delorier was out again. Delorier was out. Brink was in. So in the forward core, at least, you say, hey, they did play some youth. They, they're they trying to figure out what they have in Gurionov, which is totally fine. Defensively, they did have Stalin. They took Jinning out. What are you laughing at? What's so funny? Well, just a couple bits? of comments from some of our friends in What's here. What's so funny? The regular bits? guys, Matt Benick there. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's always goes to mothers, you know, selling your mom. Who said the thing about, oh, not amazing. Huh? Bet the farm, My sharks God. covered. Yeah, I Matt, wager Matt, my mother Matt, on anything. Matt Benix, right. You know, by the way, so intern Andrew and I were kind of like taking the betting approach in this game. We were taking a look at things as they were developing. And Andrew, what was it, 13 and a half minutes left in the game? The over-under was six and a half. And he and I looked at each other like, how the hell is the over-under six and a half? It was when it was still, it was a 2-2 two -two at that point. It was 2-2. Two -two. And we're like, there's no way three goals are getting scored in the third with 13 and a half minutes with the way the game was going. And then yeah, the but Flyers, the but Flyers you know, started to put the – they started to ramp up the pressure. They, they did score. It wasn't 4-2 Flyers. If They were thinking if San Jose got 3-3, three, three, it gives you the over, right? Sure, yeah. But, I mean, I'm just saying, like, I don't I don't know what the um, – I haven't paid attention to that. The, yeah. the overs would have – I would have I would have played the overs tonight. Oh, I, I, I would have played the under. Really? I would have. Well, at that point in the game, yeah. There were only four well, goals. I – just being honest, Russ, yeah. and well, saying that I, before the game, I would have played the I, overs and, and, and it I'm, went and under. I'm being, and I'm being honest as well. Right. So this is, you know, like, sure you did. You would have played it, uh, the overs, the unders against the guy with an 84 percent save percentage. This guy, he just he played four he games. In the it's league. very sad. You're so right. very sad. Good job. I would have played the under. We made him look like Ken Dryden tonight, right. though, didn't we? Uh, ah, yeah, there you go. Um, let's see. We have some stuff here in the comments, but before, well, no, let's let's get here. Uh, Jim Moretti says they are overachievers. Enough said. They they, they they continue to win. I don't know. They, they do. They, I don't they, know. They, and again, like, you know, I said it at the, at the end of the, the, the second, but I said they need to find a way to win. This was a game, and, you know, like, this is a team before. Like, we never would have said that going back a couple of years because they just – we didn't believe they could do that. But Ooh, tonight look, they dug in and they did find it. 
Titan Flyer says best part, Penguins, Canes, and Red Wings all lost tonight as well. Big for the Flyers left. Yeah, I, I don't really care. Pittsburgh, they're, they're done anyway. Don't yeah, even I don't need to be reminded are, about them anymore. Uh, Carolina. D-E-D-D-D-D. You know what? I don't much care about that either. I think they're gonna they're gonna finish ahead of the Flyers at the end of the day. They there, are. there was a uh, an interesting point here too from Anthony DeMeo, which we're gonna get to in a second. But before we do, let's talk about our sponsor for tonight's show, Pennsylvania Recovery Center. Take it away, Russ. You're doing some great, great work in the community. If you or someone you know is in need of detox or rehab, you can give them a call for a consult today. And um, you know they have locations in in four different places we've got phoenixville Phoenixville, marlton uh, uh, cherry hill cherry hill uh we were operating new life out of marlton and we have our warriors way which is our mental health housing um in in uh, phoenixville as well phoenixville fishtown fishtown and cherry hill are the big three then we have some uh parameter stuff as well all with sober housing and mental health housing if anybody needs that and if you are in need, we have this in the uh, description of the episode. If you're listening after the fact in the podcast feed or if you're with us live here on Facebook or on YouTube, phone numbers there as well, 610-233-4342. And give them a call. Um, doing some great work out there in the community. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring Appreciate tonight's it. episode. And you get to talk to me too if you call. I'll How about that? It. How about that? And that's, that's, worth a, that's worth a call. Anthony DeMeo, I want to get to this now says, is Kolosov in the a- AHL next week? Well, pretty fair to point out that Dinamo Minsk was hey, taken out tonight, or today. Good which job, means everyone. that Kolosov's season in the KHL is now over. And so now it probably is safe to say we are on Kolosov watch. Um, you know, you go back not that long ago. Jonesy night, was everybody. on this show Good job. talking Take about the two and head home. Talking about goalies and talking about Russian goalies and the fact that some might be here sooner than later. Kolosov's the first guy to fit the bill who could be over here potentially. We're not reporting anything right now, but like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Good chance he's over here before the end of this season. We would think that he's going to go to the AHL first, get used to the American rank, all that. For you, sure, have yeah. to, you have to have some. Can you explain to the people really quick, like yeah. there, there is a vast difference and why that is especially important for goalies. Wider ice and um, there's, more, so there's more room in the offensive zone. Here or uh, there. In the international size ice. Yes. So that's what he was playing in. When you come here, everything's quicker. So the shots from the corners are, you're not used to them. If they come in the international ice, you'll actually have time. Like you, It's just different angles. Yeah. It's wider out. So your, your, um, your vision, it it's only sees what you see as you go out. Yeah. I've talked to goalies about over the years. Corey Hirsch was my um, Canadian Olympic teammate in 1994. We used to talk about it all the time. And he said the dimensions are just totally different on, on the bigger rink. And in, in the NHL, everything's more clustered together. Yep. And you get more shots kind of peppered at you where they're, you see more long shots in the international type of ice. And um, and that's a big difference. It just It's just getting – and also getting used to a little bit more of the, the traffic in front of the net. Yeah. That's one of the things. So Kolosov will definitely um, – If he comes over, if he'll, he comes he'll, over go, he'll, he'll, he'll go to the A. Yes. To start. Yeah. And, well, again, the Flyers will just kind of – Hold this together as long as they can. Yep. Just get to two points, move on to the next game, see what happens, play hard again. But if it gets to a point where it's urgent, and let's say Urson breaks down or something goes on there, then you need to have a viable backup. And I, I, I don't know, I don't want to say it, but I, I don't think it'll be Sandstorm. I think you're probably right. And and look, he, this is where you come back to. Like He's been the starter for a team. Now, I get the, the level of play in the KHL is different. I get all that. And, like, yes, there's a new rink, everything see, Mike, different care, to, uh, you know, to adjust to. But that's definitely something to keep an eye on. I think there's probably, like, based on the amount of games they have left, you're probably going to get six more starts or so out of the backup goalie if things oh, go no. the right way. I, 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 you'll, you won't get six. I think that's five? That's a lot. Maybe, maybe four. How many games left? 20? 20. It depends how many back-to-backs. Yeah. That really is what comes yeah. down to. So I don't, I don't know. I don't have the schedule now. Okay. That would be. So maybe not that many. Yeah, but, I mean, I'm just saying, like, if you're going tonight and, like, Toronto, you're going to go Urson again. Yeah. Saturday, you're going to go Urson again. Yeah. Okay. You know, and you really got to, you know, get the goalie. But you also don't want the goalie playing like four and six, even yeah. though you get a little bit of a breather. That's where you definitely need your backup coming in. Which is where I think this, this whole thing gets really interesting. And look, I mean, if you're looking for something else to get excited about, potentially, there's another guy that you add into the mix. And whether it's for this year or if it's for next year, it's still an interesting name that's out there. And it'll be interesting to check his development. Remember, the, they have stocked, as best they can, they have stocked this team with a lot of goalies. They have, they have a lot of goalies in the pipeline. And, like, it'll be nice to actually get to see some of them up close. We know what Sandstrom is. 
I guess some know? of the yeah, I know. I'm just saying some. Of the, I guess some of the Russian teams they actually have uh, they have mixed uh, mixed ice, so I guess some of them are bigger than others. Yeah, they, they, there are that. some teams that uh, Asphalt Cowboy. Last comment right there. York had a solid game. York had a very solid game. Yes, I did want to. I wanted to point that he was their best defenseman tonight. Another question. Um, oh, Kyle, Kyle here asking if you bring over Kyle Sub, does that mess with Urson's head down the stretch? No, not at all. He has nothing to worry about. He is the number one on this team, at least for the rest of this season and, and, and likely going into next season as well. I can't imagine that he has to worry about his position on this team. I, I, I do not think that is something that is uh, even a factor. Yeah. So there's that. Um, let's look at, at what's coming up because that this is really – what did I call it earlier? I called it like nut-crunching time. Like this is, this is where – you're going to get a much better feel for where this team is and where they're heading. So their next few games are as follows. <clears throat> home against Toronto at Boston. Home against Toronto again. On the road against Carolina. Home against Boston. Home against Florida. At the Rangers. So that's two, four, six, seven really tough games in a row including the Rangers at MSG. Yeah, that's a walk in the park. So that's seven games where, like, if you're being honest and if you're being realistic about it, like, I don't know how many points you think they're going to walk away with there, but, like, there's a case to be made. Like, you don't want this to happen. They could lose all those games. That's seven games. Now, will they? Probably not. Could they pick up a win against a Toronto team? In, in one, like two out of three games are at home against Toronto. Could sure. they pick up a win? Sure. Toronto's, Toronto's not weird. So good. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a, a weird great. team. Yeah. They don't. The four guys don't show up. They have trouble scoring. They're deer. Okay. Their goaltending goal is suspect. You never know. Yeah. yeah. So that that's tricky. This is where this, Boston. Ad, Adam B does make a point ahead, here, and this is where the honesty comes in here. We cannot beat Boston or New York in a playoff series. I don't think there's a way that they can. On a, on a given night, you can beat a team like that in a given night. The Flyers are not equipped right now to, to – that's just, that's what they're trying to climb to. I feel like they have a better chance. They match uh, up Toronto, a little bit better. Well, no, no, no. Not Boston or New York. New York's a I, problem. I think that – well, if you had to pick a team that they match up better with between Boston and New York in a seven-game series. It'd be New York for I would me. say I would say New York yeah. as well. I'm not saying they can beat them. I'm not saying that they would win a seven-game series. But Bye. I think that if you, had, if you had your choice there, that would be your choice. If you could pick those or Toronto, you take Toronto. Because Toronto has the weight of the entire country on their back. What else? Oh, I mean, well, I mean, it's this is the playoffs up there, and it's heads are rolling. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is a, an important stretch cup. But I'll tell you one thing: what I, I do know, probably playing and seeing the way games go in this league, what you you think probably won't be what happens. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. you'd be like, oh, we're gonna lose tonight, and then you end up finding a way to win. The game. Yeah, I mean, anything can happen. Now Thursday, they won't have Torts on the bench. He'll be finishing. So I actually game suspension. I actually heard from somebody earlier in Uh-oh. the building here tonight oh. that Torts didn't even – apparently he was not allowed in the building past 4 o'clock. Really? Is what the what the rumor was on the press box. I don't want to get – I don't want to sell this as absolute fact, but I did hear from two Flyer sources that apparently he didn't even – wasn't even going to be here uh, in the building because they didn't – and they, he didn't want to be exposed to the cameras mm-hmm. for everything that went on in their panning cameras in the press box. That's what they would have done. Wes McCauley's fingerprints. And the Flyers, <laughs> the producer the Flyers got now for TV, he would have had it on him the whole time. He would have had, like, a little side cam on him. Yeah. Like the little hero. Like the T-Swift oh, cam? we can't live like without t- tarts <laughs> tonight on the little – on our what little hero cam. To, what would Hitch have to say about that? They wouldn't be able to get him in the frame. <laughs> Don't start us. You had to do this. Dude. I had a, I had a, so should I tell him what we were talking about, Andrew, during the game? So I, <clears throat> I was talking about how, like, I, I'm talking about Bernie Sanders. I don't know how Bernie Sanders came up during the third period, but I was like, you know what? If, if San Jose scores, then everybody gets a point. You go to overtime, everybody gets a point. So I started, I started, you know, Bernieing. Bernie. Like the Bernie, the, Bernie the, Sanders, the, the, the senator Hickey from Vermont, Vermont guy there, oh, the senator yeah. from Vermont. He's actually from Brooklyn. If but anyway. San Jose scores a goal, then you go to overtime. Everybody gets a point. The billionaire class has had far too much time <laughs> to go out <laughs> and to oversee bad hockey. And they're talking about expansion. Your t- your city gets a team. Every city gets a team. <laughs> that is excellent. That's your that's your. I thing. thank you tremendously. All right. Anyway. Um, Tonight was the night. They uh, got their two points. Everybody won. Trannel on Thursday. 
Toronto will be here. Anthony will be back. He'll I, be back. I cannot. He flies conf- back tomorrow, allegedly. Um, in cargo. <laughs> <laughs> He's like. Can you imagine? And it's got like <laughs> it's like tied between two donkeys and, in the back. <laughs> and tells and tells his fiance, I got a really good deal on this flight. Hey, and I, it's like it's like I, one of the military planes, uh, like where they yeah. have like the what? What's yeah, the, you got like the chicken the feathers what's, flying in the back. <laughs> what's the what's the stuff called that they like tether everything down in the military? Like it looks like a cargo net. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. And Ant's just like you know tucking his feet, make sure he doesn't fly out of the plane. Yeah, it's great. I'd love to see Ant tied to the wing. <laughs> Come back with a pair of goggles on to the banana hammock, flying on a wing. <laughs> to be like, and it's like the greatest American hero. Russ doesn't remember that show either. No, no. <laughs> Google, Google the greatest American hero. Oh, look. You guys, are, I, I know. I'm, I'm hoping all my my uh, my Gen X people oh know what we're talking God. about. But all yeah. right, so we're. I remember just stupid right now. I don't know what's happening. Um, it's time. I, I think it's probably time for us to go. We'll be back Thursday with the press row show. At some point this week, we'll also figure out a time to do a regular snow the goalie because there's a lot to talk about. I think that what there's we are always lots to talk about on this show. <laughs> Are there any more of those <laughs> Twizzlers over there, Russ? How about those M&M peanuts there? Good night, everybody. You get one of everything <laughs> on the buffet line. <laughs> one of everything. All right. It's time for us to go. We'll be back later this week. Subscribe wherever Love you, you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, and subscribe on YouTube and ring the bell so you get notified night, when we everybody. go live. Everybody have, have a great night. night. We will talk to all of you on Thursday night here on the Press Row Show, the number one rated pregame and post game show, the site of the Mississippi and South of the Arctic Circle, presented by Pennsylvania Recovery Center. Have a great night, everybody.